Hi, this is Kenny Ballou, and I'm going to show you how to build my portable deep water culture hydroponic system. This is one of the simplest hydroponic systems to build, and it's very easy to maintain. One design goal of this system is that I want it to be portable. I want it to be fully contained in one unit so that I can pick it up easily and move it to a new location. For this design, I want all of the external air tubes and the air pump inside the unit so that it can be picked up without worrying about managing what's attached to the box. I also don't want to have to worry about a single unit being attached to another box requiring disassembly before moving it. Let me give you a quick tour of what I'm going to show you how to build. The deep water culture hydroponic system has net pots that hold the plant root system. The oxygen and nutrients wick up from the water that touches the bottom of the net pots. I will transfer these lettuce and spinach plants from this germination station directly into the net pots. I'll add some expanded clay pebbles to hold the root system upright and eventually the plant's roots will dangle into a bath of oxygen and nutrient-rich water that's at the exact pH level my plants love. Each of these units has a dual port air pump in the lower tote that connects to an air stone inside the upper tote by tubing that runs from the lower tote to the upper tote. Let me show you how to make one of these. Two 8 to 12 gallon plastic totes with black lids. An air pump. A large ceramic air stone. Air tubing that is a quarter inch by 20 feet. A package of quarter inch T connectors. Check valves used to keep the water from flowing back into the air pump. Six net pots sized at 3.75 inches. One 8 foot 2 by 4. A tube of clear silicon adhesive. A pack of small cable ties. Cable tie mounting tabs. Optionally, some duct tape or Velcro to secure the wooden supports in the lower tote. Total cost $59. Some of the parts can be used to make additional units. The cost of just the totes, air pump, and air stone is $32. If you divide the shared cost of the supplies needed to create three units, the price per unit is only $41 each. A Dremel is very useful for cutting holes in the plastic lid, but you could also use something like tin snips after drilling a start hole, or a razor knife if you're very careful. The holes do not need to be perfectly round, they just need to be small enough to hold the net pots from falling into the bin. An electric drill. A 1 4th inch drill bit. A 1 inch hole cutting bit. This is optional, you could also use something like a razor knife a saw to cut the 2x4, a measuring tape, a razor knife, a permanent marker, silver if it's available, but black will work, a compass to draw a circle or a circle pattern that's 3.5 inches in diameter. I found plastic drinking cups with mouths that are exactly 3.5 inches. A vacuum cleaner to vacuum out cutting debris from inside the plastic tote. For these instructions, I will refer to an upper tote and a lower tote. The upper tote will hold water. The lower tote will hold the air pump and tubing. Be careful that you don't drill holes in the upper tote that will be below the water line. Draw a 3.5 inch circle in each corner of the lid and two circles between the side holes. Make sure the holes are fairly evenly spaced. Do not place the circles too close to the edge as the side of the lid will help support the plants. Cut out all of the circles. Clean the edges of the cut area and completely remove plastic debris. It's important to remove all of the plastic shreds as this debris could fall into the water. Empty the cutting debris from the plastic tote and vacuum out any pieces that cling to the side. Measure the width of the bottom of your tote. My 12 gallon tote was 13 inches wide at the bottom. Cut two sections of 2x4 to match the width of the bottom of your tote. Measure the plug width that is attached to the air pump. 
Most will be one inches wide. Cut a hole in the corner of the lower coat large enough to pass the air pump's power cord. Using a quarter inch bit, drill an exit hole for the air tube in the lower tote. Note that when the upper tote is filled with water, it will compress the portion of the lower tote side walls. When you choose an exit hole, make sure the tubing will not be compressed by the upper tote's side walls. If your tote has indented hand grip areas, these may work well for an exit hole. Otherwise, create the hole low enough that the air tube will not contact the side walls. In my tote, I found that I could drill a hole in the hand grip to route my air tube in a way that created less exposed tubing. If your air pump has dual output ports, cut two 5-inch sections of quarter inch tubing to join the ports at a T-fitting. Connect the tubing sections to each of the air pump ports. Make sure the tubes push all the way onto the port barbs. Connect the two sections of tubing to each side of the quarter inch T-fitting. If your air pump is adjustable, turn the air pump to its highest setting. Mine goes to 11. Wash the plastic totes and lids with hot water and soap. Dry the plastic totes and lids. Place the air pump in the lower tote and thread the power cord out of the tote. Determine how much tubing you need to connect from the air pump to the air stone. Measure from the air pump around the wooden block in the lower tote and up the tote's inner wall. Then insert the upper tote and measure from the exit hole of the lower tote to the top of the upper tote, down the inside of the upper tote, and then to the middle of the tote. Cut the tube to the proper length. Connect the tube to the T-fitting of the air pump. Insert the two sections of 2x4s that will support the upper tote. It will also keep the air pump from being compressed by the upper tote. Route the air tube around the wooden support using adhesive cable tie tabs. Install the upper tote into the lower tote, making sure that the air tube is not compressed. Using a quarter inch drill bit, drill a hole as high as possible on the upper tote in an area that is directly above the air tube's exit hole from the lower tote. Insert the air tube into the new hole in the upper tote, leaving a short loop of tubing on the outside of the totes. Cut the air tube at the loop to allow the installation of the check valve. The check valve will keep water from flowing back into the air pump. Water backflow will occur if you lose power to the air pump. If water backflows to the pump, it will destroy the pump. Rinse the air stone in preparation for installing it into the upper tote. Place the air stone in the center of the bottom of the upper tote. Make sure the air tube can reach the air stone. If the tube is too short, cut a new tube. Install the check valve between the cut tubes, making sure that the check valve is oriented so that the airflow can pass from the air pump into the upper tote. The check valve should be marked with the word OUT, showing the direction that the air flows out. However, if in doubt, blow into the check valve to determine the direction of airflow. Use silicone adhesive to secure the tie wrap, one inch in front of the air stone's barb. Glue a second tie wrap on the side wall to route the air tube toward the air stone. The tie wraps will keep the air stone from floating into your plant's root system or moving from its optimal placement located in the center of the bottom of the tote. Insert tie wraps through the tie wrap tabs. Allow the tie wrap tabs to dry overnight. 
When the silicone is dry, attach the air tube to the air stone barb. Secure the air tube with tie wraps. Plug in your air pump to test the air stone. Fill your tote with water up to the bottom of the net pots. Install the tote cover and the net pots. If you build a hydroponic system, I'd love to see a photo of how it turned out. Find my contact information on my website, mygreenblender.com. Subscribe to my blog for more hydroponic updates and information on staying healthy with fruits and vegetables. This is Kenny Ballou. I hope you found this helpful. I look forward to your feedback.